to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi Fi's, welcome back to yet another underground and under renovation episode of the wireless woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because well when you like it well i love it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications of when i go live and when i upload new content so today's podcast is called The Nervous System Knows. Because the nervous system knows. I had a couple of situations this week that just didn't sit right with me, didn't sit well with me. I'm a scientist at heart. So before I develop a theory, I have to test my hypothesis. I have to test it. We are spirit beings. We are creatures who have come into existence because of the word. And our words have power. Our words create worlds. They create environments. They create tiny universes. And we live in them. We live in our thoughts. Our thoughts become words. And our words, they, they, they give our intentions away. If you've ever really sat and listened to someone, and then there was an action, and the action seemed to really just not line up with their words, with what they see it, with who you have come to believe they are based on the words that come out of their mouth. Once you see the action and you actually go back and remember the words, more often than not, their words gave away their true intentions. The problem is most of us aren't actually paying that close attention to what people say, to what we say, but the words that people speak consciously audibly and subconsciously they create an environment i have come into spaces with people i knew were talking about me in a certain way because of how the atmosphere shifted when i came into the space now you can let other people gaslight you about this but the one thing that cannot be negated when it comes to a person's energy in a person's space. You cannot speak negatively about a person and still be nice to them in person. You can't speak positively about a person and be mean and nasty to them. Your environment, your actions, your nervous system is going to line up with what you said and what you've called people. I know this because, being the wireless woman, I take up a lot of space when I come into areas and when I come into spaces, and it's because of the things that I say about myself in my own personal time. I say things about myself like, the black woman is God. The black woman is the first manifestation of God on earth. That means you are the very extension of God in the earth. I say things about myself, who I am, and what I intend to accomplish in my interactions with people and have a very positive self-talk around who I am and what I believe about myself and the world around me. And when you have self-esteem, And self-confidence, when your emotions are self-regulated, when you have self-acceptance, 
See, I can accept myself not based off of false sense of self, but because I have wrestled with my shadow man, because I understand the good and the bad of who I am and what it brings into environments. I understand who all the characters at play are. I understand it to the point that I've learned to defend it. I'll give you an example. I would say things like, they're going to turn me back to the old me. See, I know, (laughs) I know who I am and what I'm capable of bringing into a space. But what I had to learn about every time I said things like that was that a boundary had been crossed. And the thing about a a boundary being crossed is whether it's another person crossing the boundary or you crossing back over the boundary to go back into spaces that you've already blocked off. A place that you already blocked off to guard your own peace. There are people because they live in perpetual torment because they are dissatisfied and unhappy about who they are, because they haven't accomplished the things that make them happy, they need company there. And they will pull you out of the work that you've done back into your shadow self, because they spent the whole time projecting that and creating that environment around you. And so you have to be selective with who you surround yourself with, because more often than not, their shadow will come out. They'll say it to you. You'll hear it. They'll say things like, oh, you think you're, you'll feel the adversarial space because there's something unlike them in the atmosphere. And you got to let that tell you something about who the people you're surrounding yourself with are. You can either have an echo chamber, a gas chamber. (laughs) of your thoughts that you sit in that choke you out. If you sit in shit long enough, it stops thinking. But when you separate yourself, when you come out from among that toxic element, that is when you start to see what you're protecting, what those defenses, what that nervous system is trying to defend. And in order for you to discover the new elements in inside of yourself, you got to separate it out. You know, in the early days of chemistry, when they were learning about new elements and discovering new elements, they would have to separate it out from old common elements. You know, they had to separate salt to find out that there was sodium there. They had to separate aluminum, titanium, to find out that one was different from the other. And there's some things that you're above. There's some treatment that you've tolerated and you're above it. But no one's going to treat you different until you separate yourself from that. Until you protect and defend the thing that keeps you from your lowest element. Because see, if I put hydrogen with oxygen, I'll get water. But you have to be able to be the element that can come into a reaction, a a, a chemical exchange with someone else and your properties not be changed. Your bonds not be broken. Now, if you're interacting with people and you're feeling that anxiousness, you know, there's a difference between nervousness. That's a lack of preparation. That's being out of your depth and anxiousness. When you know you've prepared for the moment that you're in, when you know you deserve what you worked for, but there are other people that would come into that space and try to pull you off your square. That's the anxiousness. It's a defense system. It's an early warning detection system that you're in a storm. That it's time, just like people do in storms, to close off your windows to get to your safe space. 
Now, if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel it. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. It's 2023, baby. <laughs> and we're moving too far into who we are, what we've accomplished. We've got our sights locked and loaded to the point that we're not going to be dissuaded, persuaded by Smiths who are masquerading around as women in red dresses to believe that what we know about who we are and what creates safety within us is wrong. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. Now, anybody else that want to stay in that environment, anybody else who wants to hear the sound of their own echo is more than welcome to stay exactly where they are. We are going to have to unplug, <laughs> be unbothered so that we can press on and be unleashed. Until the next time, I look forward to engaging with y'all in these comments. But for now, you're dismissed. See, that's liberation and